Moving up the wall from the basketball figures are a couple other sports figures here. Starting with uh, Grayson here plays Jermaine Dye baseball figure with the Chicago White Sox. Grayson was mostly known for making waves of, of football figures, and we've seen several of them. Um, but they also did a baseball wave, and I grabbed the Jermaine Dye from that wave because he's a White Sox player. I'm a White Sox fan. Also, I have the loose Ichiro we saw earlier. And then here's a WWE wrestling figure of uh, Molina. And this one, I, I picked it up from my collection because it's a Chase figure. I don't really collect wrestling figures, but I saw it sent at the Walmart. It's a Chase figure. And she has this big belt that pretty much covers up her torso. There you see it. And it says includes one of a thousand commemorative championship belts. And if you look at the belt up close, even uh, 562 of a thousand. Um, any of the figures from this wave, Series 5 there, that were coming through that are the belts and the stick around were Chase figures. And I just I saw it sent at the Walmart one day, so I'm a collector of action figures, particularly Chase figures, so I just added it to my collection. And this display sits directly across from it. This is more starting line of football figures, the early ones from 96 through 97. And then down here below are some classic doubles NFL two-packs from the starting lineups. Well, it starts on the end here with this 1996 edition. It's Joey Galloway, starting line football figure. It's the earliest uh, football f uh, starting line I have in my collection. I didn't start collecting these till 98, so I went back and got this one, I think, off eBay because it's Joey Galloway. I'm a big fan of his. Now we're to 97 uh, edition with Kareem Dool jabbar former Dolphins running back, Troy Aikman, Drew Bledsoe, Mark Brunel from the 97 line here, John Elway, and Brett Favre in training camp gear. And then below those uh, is a classic doubles two-pack of Peyton Manning. This was an online exclusive where it shows Manning in the white Colts and then in the Tennessee uh, jersey where he attended college. And these next four two-packs are Super Bowl commemorative two-packs from the 2000 year. You can see with the sticker on there. And we'll start here on the end. Uh, again, this is a 2000, it's a Super Bowl commemorative two-pack that has a replica Lombardi trophy in there. And then two star players from that Super Bowl. And this was Super Bowl 34, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, between the Rams and the Titans, there you see Marshall Falk and Eddie George. And this one was Super Bowl 33. Terrell Davis, uh, Jamal Anderson from the Broncos and Falcons. Super Bowl 32, Broncos Packers. You see John Elway there paired up with Brett Favre. And this was actually Super Bowl 19 between the Dolphins and the Niners. And there you see Dan Marino, I apologize again for the glare, and Joe Montana. So Marino Montana there paired up. Remember this Montana uh, Marino two pack, as well as the Falk George two pack, were the two hardest Super Bowl two packs to find from this wave. And I think my my buddy Paul found both of these for me at some Walmart somewhere back in the day. So thanks, Paul, for that. And then finish out the two packs below those. Here are some uh, classic doubles two packs you're going to see down here that feature players of both past and present. And we'll start on the end over here. Here's a couple of former Baltimore Colts stars. Johnny Unitas paired up with the receiver Raymond Berry. They were teammates with the Colts back in, I think, the 50s and maybe the 60s. Over here is one of those past-present ones. Running back Eddie George paired up with Earl Campbell, legendary uh, Oilers running backs. Here's legendary Steelers running backs Jerome Bettis and Franco Harris. Legendary Steelers alignment from the Steel Curtain, uh, Jack Lambert and Jack Ham. And this one on the end is a father-son two-pack, Peyton and Archie Manning. Back to McFarland sports figures along the wall here. NHL Series 10. And below NHL Series 10 are some NFL Series 15. And then below that, we're going to see some more basketball figures here and hockey figures down here. So beginning up here with NHL Series 10, here's David Ebisher, uh, one-time Colorado goaltender. Uh, this is actually the regular version of him in the third Colorado jersey. We saw the chase version, the white Colorado jersey, but unfortunately I wasn't able to group him with the regular, with the rest of the Series 10 up here. He's up in the front. Next to him, you got Drew McGinley, red jersey chase. Yarmer Yager, Reagan chase figure. Reagan in the third jersey, Liberty. Chase figure in the white Rangers. 
Robert Long of the Wings, Red Jersey Chase. And this is actually Rick Nash's rookie figure, number former number one pick of the of the Blue Jackets, white jersey reg, and blue jersey chase with his upper deck mini jersey here. And then down here with the NHL, I'm sorry, the NFL Series 15, there's Cedric Benson, one time Bears running back, his rookie figure there, only one version. Reg and Chase Ray Lewis, Reg in the all black, and Chase in the purple jersey, white pants. I like that pose too, where he's just like throwing his head back and with that Ray Lewis, uh, you know, that was what his, what his, his shout, his scream. It was just, it's great. And this actually tells Tony Romo's rookie figure. Uh, that's his first figure produced by McFarlane. They're in the white jersey, regular, and the Thanksgiving third jersey, Chase Romo. Moving down that same display are some Series 11 and 12 NBA figures that you're seeing there. And then below those are some NHL Series 15 figures, which were a Canada exclusive wave of hockey figures. And Series 11 starts on the left here with this Carmelo Anthony. It's a chase figure in a third alternate uh, Nuggets jersey that they wear. There's Ron Artest's first figure with the Kings. Uh, only a reg, no chase exists. There's a red jersey Chauncey Billups chase figure. This is a Steve Francis Toys R Us exclusive figure that features him with the Knicks. We saw him earlier with the Houston Rockets, but he also played for the Knicks in his career, and that's Toys R Us exclusive one. Here's Joe Johnson's rookie figure. Again, just a regular no chase uh, version exists of that one. And then down here we get some Series uh, 12. This is a Michael Finley surprise chase figure. Only one version of Tony Parker, his rookie figure here. Chris Paul's rookie figure with the Reg and Chase. Reg in the, in the dark uh, Hornets jersey, Chase in the white. Another Toys R Us exclusive here, Wally Zerbiak with the T-Wolves, a guy who played for many teams in his career. And down here is Dwayne Wade, Reg and Chase, Reg in the white, Chase in the red there. Ben Wallace of the Bulls in the red jersey, only one version of him. And same thing with this one, Gil Gilbert Arenas, only one version of him in the blue. And now we're into that Canada exclusive wave at NHL 15 with this Dion Fanu figure, was his rookie figure in the red uh, Flames jersey with the upper deck mini jersey here. And these figures are actually pre karm These figures, I think, were from 2005, if not mistaken. So that was before Karm was hooking me up. I really don't remember who I got these off of, just probably some guy in the spawn board. There's Eric Stahl, his rookie figure. There's a Darcy Tucker blue jersey chaser from that Series 15 wave. And then three versions of Roberto Luongo here. And again, I believe this is a rookie figure. There's the white Vancouver jersey. Here's the dark Vancouver jersey version. And this one was the throwback, which again, Vancouver's wearing this current wearing this uh blue and green scheme as their current jersey. But at that time, it was considered their, their throwback retro jersey. And this was the scheme they were wearing, this jersey right here at that time. And also, too, before we move away, I just want you guys to note something about, say, this figure here, the Roberto Luongo. Notice he has the net, and notice his helmet, the way it's painted up with the net in the package. Just make a little mental note of that, because I'm going to revisit that uh, later on. And finally, at the bottom of this display is NBA Series 4. And Series 4 of NBA was a specialty wave. It consisted only of four different players. Jermaine O'Neal, Jalen Rose, Amari Stoudemire, and Dewan Wagner. And was available only through specialty stores. I believe GameStop, EB Games, and some targets got this wave of figures in. Because, again, it was a specialty wave and not available mass marketed. But anyway, just to show you the figures from that wave... Here's Jermaine O'Neal's rookie figure uh, off the rim, kind of a cool pose. Reg in the yellow and white uh, Pacers jersey chase. And there's a little loose Jermaine O'Neal figure, three-inch figure there on top of the, the two six-inch ones. And then there's Jalen Rose from his time with the Bulls. Regular in the red, chase in the white. Also little variations with a sticker. Some of these uh, figures in the wave say action figure debut with a sticker up at the top of the, uh, the uh, clamshell. Others did not have it. Again, notice on this Jermaine O'Neal, it has a sticker. On that one, it does not. So some had them, some didn't. 
if there was any rhyme or reason to it, I don't remember um, exactly which ones got stickered. There you see a Marek Stoudemire's rookie figure in the white Suns jersey with the sticker. And down here, the purple jersey chase again has, has a sticker. Some do, some don't. And then finally, Dewan Wagner, Reg and Chase. Reg in the red calves and Chase in the white calves. Continuing along the wall, we're at this display now in about the 8 o'clock position on our, our fictional clock. And this is mostly a baseball figure display that you see there from a few different waves of baseball with just a little sprinkle, just a sprinkle of basketball figures as well. Top of the display, we see MLB Series 19 figures here, along with a stray figure, which is Trevor Hoffman up in the corner here. He was actually left over from Series 18. Uh, that was a series we saw Mario Rivera, Justin Verlander, Brandon Webb, Ryan Howard. He's from that series. It's a prize chase figure there. I just couldn't fit him with the others. And then now we kick off with Series 19, Johnny Damon figure, uh, Reg, Pinstripes, Yankees, Chase of the Royals, a throwback retro, Prince Fielder. On the end of the display are four NBA figures, and these four figures seen here are all Collectors Club exclusive figures, only available online through the Collectors Club store online. Start up top here with this Latrell Sprewell of the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves dark jersey. We saw him earlier with the Knicks. And these three figures here are from a wave called Young Stars. Again, Collectors Club exclusive figures. Here's a former uh, high school basketball phenom, Sebastian Telfair. Uh, he played with the Portland Trailblazers uh, at that time. This is probably around 2005 or so. J.R. Smith, uh, he's a journeyman NBA player. Just recently signed with the Los Angeles Lakers to play with them. And there he is in the Young Stars series back in, when he was a rookie with the, uh, the New Orleans uh, Hornets. And there is former Jazz star Andre Kirilenko in the Young Stars series. And then down over here, we have a couple of three-inch baseball figures. Here's one of Orlando Hudson, Arizona Dimebacks. The Todd McFarlane never produced a six-inch figure of Hudson, just the three-inch, which is why I got the figure. It was the only one uh, produced of Hudson. I think it was actually um, a two-pack stadium giveaway uh, Diamondbacks exclusive Hudson figure. And then here's Mike Piazza as a member of the San Diego Padres. Uh, Piazza is best known for the Dodgers and the Mets, of course. But he played a, a, a year with the San Diego Padres late in his career. And then he finished with the Oakland A's, I believe, uh, last year of his career. Again, I got that figure because it's showing Piazza as a Padre. Um, you don't see very many of them in Padres uniform. And that brings us to the bottom of the display with Series 7 baseball down here. And so we start in the corner. There's a Scott Rowland with the Cardinals white jersey chase figure. Bernie Williams, pinstripes chase figure. The reg has him in the road gray. And questionable job in the pinstripes. There's some like it, some don't. The way, Tar uh, the way Todd had, had it uh, displayed on his jersey. Mark Pryor, we've seen him previous. Here's actually his first figure. Action figure debut, debut in the gray road Cubs jersey. Another top pitcher of the time, Barry Zito of the A's. Reg figure white, chase figure in the gray. Up top here is Randy Johnson, Arizona Dimebacks regular figure. This is a Troy Gloss chase figure. And the regular, as you can see in the picture, has a standard white uniform. The chase has the cutoff sleeves uh, jersey with the red uh, undershirt, or the red uh, t-shirt, I should say, that he's wearing there. So his red sleeves and the cutoff jersey make it the chase as opposed to the standard white jersey. And then here are three retro figures, chase figures. Here of Roger Clemens, features a member of the Blue, uh, the Blue Jays with a little retro sticker there. It's a chase figure. Alex Rodriguez of the Mariners. And here we saw this Jim Domi figure earlier in the Cleveland Indians uh, with the Phillies packaging. Here he is in the Indians packaging. So now I kind of curl off the wall to show you this football display. As I, we now turn our attention from baseball and basketball figures to football figures. And this display sits, just to give you perspective, at the base of the sports car display, which I already showed you these cards, if you recall. And there's some more sports figures up here we're going to see. But this uh, display, rather sizable display, is all football figures that you're seeing there. And it starts back here with Series 6 football figures, which are right here. And then at the base here are some football figures from Series nine and series 10 and below those at the very bottom are series i believe 18 and 19 football here 
And then also you might have observed up top here, we see some mini jerseys. And we're gonna analyze and cover all that in just a minute here, where the jerseys come from and such. So series six football starts here with Mike Allstott, red jersey, red, chasing the white. Top running back at the time, Sean Alexander, red jersey, or red in the white pants, I should say. Chase figure in the blue pants. Saints running back Deuce McAllister, red in the white jersey, chasing the black. Here we see legend Emmett Smith as a Cardinal in three different versions. Two of them have him in the white jersey. Here's white jersey with white gloves and white jersey with red gloves. So there's glove variations. Don't remember which was the rare one or if one glove variation was, was more rare or more soft than the other. And then here is red jersey chase figure with the white pants. And down here is Joey Harrington, Reg in the in the dark jersey, white in the chase. Priest Holmes, Reg and Chase, Reg, white jersey, red pants, Chase, red jersey, red pants. And there's a corrected version of this, so to say it has a red jersey, white pants. That's uh the, the scarcest of the three. Drew Bledsoe is a member of the Bills, white jersey chase. And then here are retro chase figures. We saw these similarly with the baseball. Now it's with a football. Brett Favre. Retro Falcons figure, team that drafted him back in 91. Rich Gannon, retro Chiefs, Chase figure. Here's a really nice figure and fairly highly softer. Emmett Smith, Cowboys, Chase figure. Marshall Falk, Colts, Chase, retro. Here we see Jason Seahorn, Chase figure, member of the Rams. Saw him earlier as a member of the Giants. And up top here is Steven Davis, Retro Chase, a member of the Carolina Panthers. So now the base of the display, we see some NFL series figures 9 and 10 here, and then some other later waves down in the corner. We'll start up top in the left with this figure of former linebacker, Steelers linebacker Kendrell Bell. There he is, white jersey reg, and the dark jersey chase. And if you guys allow me just to hit the pause button just for a couple minutes here, two things I wanted to comment and reflect on, and I use the Kendrell Bell figure here because he's a prime example of both. First thing I want to touch on is this big stain you see in the back of his jersey, kind of a combo dirt, grass, turf stain. And though that stain may seem sort of insignificant, trivial, um, it's not going to up the resale value of that figure any, but why do I think that's significant? Well, throughout this video, I have been uh, heaping both praise on Todd as well as doling out criticism for the product that he has delivered to us for the better part of the past 20 years and the product that I've been collecting and consuming and adding to my collection, again, for the better part of 20 years. And once again, I can't stress enough that now that you've seen thousands of different figures in my collection, you can kind of now realize there's a difference, a significant difference between the Hasbro starting lineup figures that were being produced back in the 90s, and these McFarlane sports picks that Todd was giving us in the 2000s. And you've seen enough of the figures now to also know that Hasbro would never offer that level of detail in their figures, but yet Todd has. And I think that's one of the large reasons why collectors like myself and probably a bevy of others out there kept coming back year in and year out to add these sports figures sports pick figures to their respective collections is because of the level of detail that Todd was offering up in his lines. And that grass stain's a prime example of it on the Kendrell Bell figure. Once again, I think Todd's work is second to none when it comes to the level of detail that he has put into his figures. And the other thing I wanted to touch on was the player selection here. The player selection here, Kendrell Bell. Some of you might be saying, who's Kendrell Bell? I don't remember him. Uh, Kendrell Bell was not uh, a memorable name in the sense of he didn't have a Hall of Fame career like Brian Urlacher, Troy Polamalu, or Ray Lewis, some of the big defensive players that Tom McFarlane produced a lot of figures of throughout his 20 years of producing uh, uh, sports pick NFL figures. But Bell was a top name of the day. And again, this Series 9 figure was coming out around the year 2004-2005. And at that time, Kendrell Bell was a top name in the game. 
Uh, he was a relevant defensive player. I believe he was 2001 Defensive Rookie of the Year. And so once again, you know, Todd produced players that were relevant at that time. They were big names at the time, even though a guy like Kendrell Bell maybe didn't go on to have a Hall of Fame career. Still, he has a place in my collection because he was an, a memorable name at that time. That takes us to the bottom of the display, the last row. Here are a couple of figures of Shannon Sharp, Hall of Fame tight end, one of the greats. These two figures were Collector's Club exclusives, as you can see it says in the package there. And there were two versions of Sharp offered to members of the Collector's Club who were lucky enough to get them. There's Sharp featuring what they call the Orange Crush, the older Denver jersey, which was orange, and the, uh, the helmet. And this one's called the Modern Sharp. The uniforms the Denver Broncos are wearing, I don't know, come maybe the, the early to mid-90s. Uh, they switched over from this uniform come the mid-90s to this more modern one with a different helmet. And both are highly softer. I think the modern Sharp was a harder to find. It was a harder, more softer one of the two, but nevertheless cool figures. Then it takes us to Series 18 and 19 football. Again, you'll notice an obvious package change there, going from the all-plastic clamshell we saw in the earlier waves to now a cardboard top, which you can kind of see buried in there, and the clamshell affixed to it. And also it was during this waves that Todd got away from doing jersey chase figures, and did the tweaks. And we saw those earlier with the baseball figures, dirty pants versus clean pants, no eye black on the Andrew Jones versus eye black. Same concept here. We see uh, future Hall of Fame running back Adrian Peterson. Here's a regular where it features him with white wristbands. And the chase, or the tweak, you would say, that features him with black wristbands. Here's DeMarcus Ware. His uniform is clean, making him the clean chase tweak for, uh, version. The, the regular had him in a dirty pants and socks and cleats. Two Marion Barbers here. This same Marion Barber chase because of his gloves, or a tweak again, I should say. The regular version had him with white gloves. The tweak has him with these like darker gloves that you see. And here he is in a third Thanksgiving jersey, and that was a Target exclusive of Marion Barber. You can see by the sticker there. Jay Cutler, as a member of the Broncos, uh, regular had him in the all blue, blue pants, blue jersey. Chase has him in white pants. So actually, Todd did a little something with the uniform there rather than just the tweaks. But here's another tweak. It's Don Driver, a former Dancing with the Stars uh, champ, as well as, I believe, Super Bowl uh, champion with the Packers. And you can see the base is dirty, making it the dirty tweak uh, driver, the Chase figure, I guess you would say. A couple of figures of Brett Favre as a member of the Jets. A uh, white jersey, and this dark jersey was a Toys R Us exclusive. On the end, Clinton Portis is a member of the Skins. Clean pants and uniform makes it the tweak. And above that one, you got LaDainian Tomlinson. And you see the armband is black as opposed to white. That makes it the tweak because the regular had his armband in white. Now for the mini jersey that you're seeing here that adorn the top of the NFL Series 6 figures on display. Certainly not the first time we've seen these mini jerseys in my collection. We've seen plenty of um, uh, football and hockey mini jerseys scattered throughout my collection. But what makes these a little bit different is where these came from. These mini jerseys here we're seeing were not from Upper Deck with the specially marked pack cards. These mini jerseys actually came through Burger King. And I don't remember if it was the summer of 2007 or maybe 2008, but one of those summers, Burger King had a promotion with the NFL where they were trying to hype up the season, which would roll around in August and September. And with a specially marked meal, you would get one random jersey from one random team. And it was similar to a Happy Meal. You got the burger, the fries, and the soft drink, and then instead of the toy, you get one mini jersey. Well, being the big uh, sports fan that I am and collector that I am, I had to get them. So let me just run through them here. It was one player per team. Uh, there's Alex Crumpler of the Falcons, Matt Leinart of the Cardinals, Todd Heap of the Ravens, Lee Evans of the Bills, Steve Smith of the Panthers, Brian Ehrlich of the Bears, Carson Palmer, Bengals, um, Julius Jones, Cowboys, Champ Bailey, Broncos, Roy Williams, Lions, A.J. Hawk, Packers, Andre Johnson, Texans, Peyton Manning, Colts, Maurice Jones, Drew Jaguars, Larry Johnson, Chiefs, Jason Taylor, Dolphins, Chester Taylor, Vikings, uh, Richard Seymour, Patriots, Drew Brees, Saints, Jeremy Shockey, Jets, Jonathan Vilma, I'm sorry, J Jeremy Shockey, Giants, Jonathan Vilma, Jets, uh, Brian Westbrook, Eagles, Heinz Ward, Steelers, Lodan Thomas, and Chargers, Jason Campbell, Redskins, 
Vince Young Titans, Colonel Cadillac Williams Buccaneers, Torrey Holt Rams, Sean Alexander Seahawks, and Alex Smith Niners. And I tried completing the set, or all 32, if there's 32 NFL teams, I, I tried getting all of them. And to date, I'm only missing one. And the one I'm missing is Cleveland Browns, and it was Braylon Edwards. I never did get that one. But I got all the others here. And I do remember eating a lot of Burger King that summer. <laughs> and also, too, the challenge became later on. You know, at first, you know, you buy the, the meal and you get the jersey and you add it to your collection. But now when it got down to needing like only seven or eight or nine more, you know, how many more burgers am I going to buy where I just get the same jersey? Couldn't really trade because I didn't have any trading partners. And so now it got to the point where I had to try to negotiate little deals with Burger King employees where I kind of appeal to, the, to maybe a, a kind person uh, working there and say, look, I'm just trying to get like, a, you know, four or five or six more jerseys to finish my collection. And, and a lot of times they say, oh, sure, here, have a look at the box here and see what we got. And then, you know, if it was what I needed, I would just offer them like, what do you want for it? If I, I'll buy a meal, I don't mind. I'm just trying to get these last five or six or seven in my collection. And so it made it kind of fun, but maybe also not the healthiest because I did, like I said, did eat a lot of Burger King that summer. <laughs> but nevertheless, kind of these, these cool jerseys. From the foot of the display, we move to the top of it here amongst the sports cards, which I know we already see in the videos. But now I want to focus on the sports figures here. It's mostly football figures, a lot of box sets there with a couple of basketball box sets mixed in. Starting in the lower right corner is a box set, a two-pack of Carmelo Anthony and LeBron James. Now these figures you see here of Carmelo and of LeBron are actually uh, rookie figures of them. They are both available on sealed card, which we're going to see in a later on video as we move to that part of the collection. But they took the same um, rookie figures off the sealed card and they put them in a box set. And why did I buy it? Well, because they were the two big stud rookies at the time and, and they still are, to be quite honest. They're still NBA stars. This is a Tracy McGrady LeBron James 2-pack in exclusive jerseys. Uh, they're kind of wearing like third or retro jerseys. They're McGrady wearing the Houston one and LeBron wearing that cool yellow Cavs jersey. So once again, exclusive jerseys. Had to get this box set. Above that is a Ben Roethlisberger San Antonio Holmes Steelers 2-pack. Uh, that's San Antonio Holmes' only McFarland uh, NFL figure. And it was made after the famous end zone catch that sealed the Super Bowl for them. Uh, Mo, my good buddy Mo in Arizona, he's probably still having not re recurring nightmares and traumatized from the, having um, victory snatched out of his hands as it looked like the Cardinals were going to win that game, but they lost it. Sorry, Mo, but I still had to get the two-pack. <laughs> but that one's a very cool one. It's uh, Tony Romo, Jason Witten two-pack. There was that famous uh, game where Witten lost his helmet and rumbled downfield with the football. It's recreating that along with his quarterback, Tony Romo. So after two-pack, uh, especially amongst Cowboys fans. Going back down to the bottom is a Manning three-pack with Father Archie there in the white jersey, black pants, and then sons uh, Peyton and Eli. Again, mostly just bought this one for the Archie Manning figure because the Eli and the and the Peyton are kind of like reprints or reissues, but it was that Archie Manning figure I wanted. That's why I got the three-pack. Not to mention is the Mannings. Another quarterback three-pack here, Brady, Roethlisberger, and Manning. And again, the big draw here was Brady in the, in the Minuteman third retro jersey, the red. That's really why I got this three-pack, because the Roethlisberger and Manning are just reissues. But again, I had to have that Brady. There's a Brett Favre two-pack with the Vikings. And there you see him with uh, no helmet on and the white jersey, exclusive figure. And up here is uh, another two-pack of Jason Witten, Michael Irvin. There are Witten's in the third Thanksgiving jersey. And there's uh, Michael Irvin with a double star in the celebration pose. Then up top's a couple of three-inch Michael Vick figures that just kind of fit snugly right there. And here's a Troikman Canton exclusive Super Bowl figure that was only available at the Canton Summer Show. Up top here's a little loose three-inch Ben Roethlisberger figure. Before I move on to showing other figures here, I wanted to kind of touch back on this uh, Troikman Canton exclusive figure. This figure of Troy Aikman was available at the Canton uh, Fan Fest show. And for those who are familiar with football, you're aware that every summer in the, in the first week of August is a preseason football game played in Canton, Ohio at the NFL Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, this summer, that game has been canceled by the NFL. But I made the drive out to Canton, Ohio, which is a small town in Ohio. and is really not known for anything but having the NFL Hall of Fame there in their town. 
And three summers in a row, 2006, 2007, 2008, I made a drive out to Canton, Ohio with uh, a couple buddies, one of them being a local buddy named Mike who collected these figures. And actually one summer, my cousin Dominic. Yes, the same Dom that provided my collection with that uh, uh, Pez, uh, President's Pez set that I showed you when we opened up this video. Uh, he made the drive out there one summer with me. And at the show would be a, a, a McFarland booth or a table, and they'd be offering an exclusive figure. And the summer of 2006, it was this Troikman figure. We're going to see another Troikman figure uh, just in a few videos in my collection, a basic figure. But this one is packaged up with the exclusive uh, 1 of 3,000 Canton sticker there. And he's got a nameplate, and he's got a little special patch on his shirt which makes him different. But every year, uh, for three summers in a row, I drive out there to this show. And it was a really great experience. I, I never actually attended the uh, the, the preseason Hall of Fame game, but I did take a tour of the NFL Hall of Fame. And in the bus room where all the legends of the game have their bus displayed, it, it was great. It was just a great experience, uh, just a, a great kind of a, a bonding thing, I don't know, male bonding thing, for lack of a better word. And also, too, I wanted to add that, though I never actually got to meet Todd McFarlane at any of these shows, I remember one summer his father, Bob McFarlane, was there. And you, I, I mean, you couldn't find a nicer guy than Bob McFarlane. Uh, he pulled me aside and talked to me for must have been an hour straight just about figures and sports and just all kinds of stuff. And just what a wonderful guy. I don't know if it's just because, I don't know, Canadian people are, are nicer by nature or what. Because Tom McFarlane, for those who don't know, is Canadian. I was you know, born and raised in Canada. But his father was such a wonderful, wonderful guy. And at the time, um, like Mark Weber from the Spawn Board was there uh, talking to us as well. And it was supposed to be a limit of one figure per, per collector, but they let us buy like 15 of these. I must have walked away with 15 or 20 of these Aikmans, and then just I kept one from my collection that you're seeing there and traded the other ones away for stuff I needed. But it was a wonderful experience. And we also saw the, the Jim Brown figure I showed you earlier, two versions with one on, uh, numbers on his helmet, one out. That was another Canton figure, and we're going to see one more as well. So the Troy Aikman Canton exclusive there. Now we're on the left side of the same display with more sports figures here on this side. Baseball, football, basketball figures there. And in the center here you see four Michael Jordan figures. And yes, I will talk about those, but I'm going to save those for last. I'm starting down here in the corner with this NHL 2-pack. It's Martin Brodeur, Marc Messier. Exclusive poses and jerseys there. Two of the greats of uh, the game. Had to get it from my collection. Another 2-pack over here is an NFL one. It is Troy Palomalo, Matt Hasselbeck. That Hasselbeck figure is seen in there, and I apologize for the glare, is the only uh, six-inch sports pick or any sports pick that Todd did. And the white jersey, Paul Mal, is supposed to be from the Super Bowl when the Steelers beat the Seahawks. Here it ends, a special edition Brett Favre collector's box edition. There he's got the helmet off, the knit on. Todd did a few of these. I thought they were pretty cool in the box uh, there. He also did a Terrell Owens that was where Owens had the helmet off sitting on the bench, which I thought was kind of a cool idea. A couple Kobe figures here. Here's a loose Kobe in the gold. And then down here is a three-inch Kobe purple jersey. It says NBA 2K10 there. It was exclusive pre-order giveaway by GameStop for anybody who or a pre-ordered a copy of 2K10. But they let me have it for my collection, so thank you, GameStop. Up here is an Aaron Rodgers Target exclusive white jersey chase. Now, we've seen this already in my collection uh, previously in the video. But what makes this one rather special is it's a prototype figure. And the reason why it's a prototype is, as you guys know, these collector's level figures that are chases are numbered on the base, and you can't see it there on the package, I know. But the base on this one, on this Aaron Rodgers white jersey chase, has no numbering. And when a chase figure like that has no collector's level numbering there on the base, uh, collectors refer to it as a prototype figure. So it makes it rare, and it was provided to my collection by Mo in Arizona. Uh, if I haven't thanked Mo enough for any of this video, I'm thanking him again. Thank you, Mo, for providing this to me. Up top here are some uh, in-package and loose figures, starting with this Roberto Clemente. It's not a sports pick. It's a stadium giveaway from Console Energy. Next to them, a couple of bronze of the 6-inch and 3-inch variety there in the white cabs, loose. There's Jackie Robinson, sliding in loose bows. And then over here, a couple of Griffies, Ken Griffey Jr. They're in the reds, running pose, loose, and they're 3-inch packaged. And here is a Brett Favre uh, Toys R Us exclusive 4-pack. See the sticker there? All four teams Favre played for, the Falcons, the Packers, the Jets, and the Vikings. And McFarland never did any chase figures on box sets except for this one. And this one's a gold chase limited to 500. And what makes it a chase is on this Favre, 
he's wearing the white jersey, the white uh, Falcons jersey, as opposed to the black one. The black one's the reg, the white's the chase. And that brings us now to the four Michael Jordan action figures you're seeing there. These four Jordan figures are from a line called Pro Shots, made by the Upper Deck Company. And what I want to do is offer them, an, uh, offer you guys a nice good look at them first. And then after we take the, the up-close look, uh, continue on with the story, otherwise known as the ongoing Michael Jordan action figure saga. So here, this one in the end is the 85 Slam Dunk Contest. And again, these are six-inch scale figures you're seeing there. Also, on the, I'll show you, they come with a little trading card inside from Upper Deck. And this one here is an 88 Slam Dunk Champion figure of Jordan there in the red jersey. There's a 91 NBA Finals switch hand layup. Jordan there switching hands, he makes the layup in the white jersey. And this is the 98 NBA Finals winning last shot, or final shot Jordan against the Jazz. So as far as the backstory goes, um, I guess we'll call this part three of the ongoing saga, just like the way ESPN uh, launched the Last Dance documentary in 10 parts. Uh, this will be part three and the first half of part three. There's going to be a second half of Jordan figures. Anyway, um, last we saw Jordan figures was in the little room in my basement. And it was from Mattel. And that was back in the year 1999-2000 when Mattel had the licensing rights to produce a series of Jordan figures called Maxim Air. We saw those already. I showed you those. And then there'd be nothing in the way of Michael Jordan figures for roughly about eight years until 2008 when these figures came out. I remember finding these figures, these four figures, at my Toys R Us in the boxes here in Michael Jordan. And so for eight years, there was nothing in the way of Michael Jordan figures, although Upper Deck did produce other figures from the Pro Shot series, namely Muhammad Ali and Tiger Woods, because those two athletes were also in our contract with Upper Deck. But Upper Deck in 2008 puts these four Jordan figures out there. And they put them in Toys R Us stores where I found mine. And they also sold them directly through their website. Like you could buy these figures, I believe, directly through Upper Deck. Uh, they don't have a brick and mortar store, but through their website. And so once again, there was an eight-year period there where there was no Michael Jordan figures because Upper Deck had exclusive licensing rights to produce Jordan and really didn't produce anything until 2008 when these four figures came out. And and once again, you know, Jordan being the most the collected athlete in the whole world, um, these things sold pretty well, and I was very fortunate to find these four different versions at my Toys R Us. But yeah, for eight years, there was nothing in the way of Michael Jordan figures um, from the time when Mattel you know, did them in 2000 until Upper Deck does them in 2008. Incidentally, Michael Jordan was not the only big-time uh, basketball player that would not have an, a figure issued of him in the McFarland Sports Pick lineup. Um, from two, you know, Todd starts making the basketball figures around 2001 or 2002, and he makes them all the way through 2019, and he never produces a Jordan figure because he can't, because of the exclusive uh, licensing rights that Upper Deck held. But Jordan wasn't the only one. There's two other big names in NBA that never had a sports pick produced to them, and those are Charles Barkley and Dennis Rodman. Both Barkley and Rodman never signed an, ex an individual contract with Todd to allow McFarland to produce basketball figures of them. And for those who know, Barkley and Rodman were notorious for not wanting to lend their, their image for licensing, uh, namely with trading cards. Uh, Barkley and Rodman, it's very hard to find any kind of Barkley or Rodman autographs from Topps, Fleur Upper Deck, Pernini that would be packed out and issued you know, through packs because Barkley and Rodman just simply wouldn't sign contracts with the card companies to have their autograph in, in, in the in the in the card lineup and same thing with their action figure they just wouldn't sign a contract with Tom McFarlane to allow him to produce figures of them so therefore the only uh, figures you would have sports figures you would have of Barkley and Rodman would be the old starting lineup figures from the 90s produced by Kenner Hasbro and same thing with Jordan all the way up until Jordan you know with Mattel in 99 2000 but nothing from from McFarlane nothing Jordan Barkley or Rodman from McFarlane because, once again, 
Todd could never land the licensing rights to produce those figures, those players. Now we turn the camera 180 degrees this way in the basement to see this display here. It's mostly uh, football with a little bit of hockey and a lot more over here, basketball and football on this display at the foot. More football over here and then football and hockey on this display here. I'll start at the top here with these four NHL figures. These four figures are part of a Canon exclusive wave of NHL that came through Grossner, which again, when I mentioned this earlier in the, in the earlier in the video with the Funkos, Grossner is a major retail store in Canada that uh, that has toys and action figures. And these are available through Grossner in Canada back around 2007, 2008. And there you see Sam Gagne of the Edmonton Oilers, his only figure, by the way. One of many Jerome McGinley's and Henrik Sedin's. And here's a Matt Sundino. What makes this one kind of special is he's featured in his All-Star jersey, in his NHL All-Star jersey. And once again, Todd McFarlane did very, very few figures in All-Star jerseys. I think only the Sundin, and there was one other one, an Alex Ovechkin in an All-Star jersey. So those are kind of rare, and when I see them, I pick them up from my collection. So yeah, these are for the four uh, Grosner Canada figures. And occupying the end here are a couple of football figures. Of Joseph Adai, and you might see kind of a glaring error there, which we'll talk about in just a second. But these were uh, from 2008, I believe, uh, NFL Wave 17. And this is back again when Todd was doing the tweaks as opposed to jersey variations. So here you can see on this one, the dirty pants on Adai makes him the chase tweak figure, whereas the regular version of Joseph Adai has him in clean pants with no, with no uh, dirt and grass stains. And then this one, you see Joseph Adai in the packaging there, former Colts running back. But yet the patching is, packaging itself says Tony Romo, making it an error figure. And I remember uh, getting a call from my buddy Jason, and he's calling me from Toys R Us, and he says, hey, I see I got the figure here from Joseph Adai, but it's kind of weird. I said, well, what's up? And he said, well, it's Joseph Adai, but he's in a packaging that says Tony Romo. So it's Joseph Adai erroneously packaged in a Tony Romo packaging. And I, t I told him, dude, pick it up. I definitely want it for my collection. Again, we saw an uh, example this earlier with Barry Bonds and the Sean Green packaging. And there's another you know, uh, example of something getting through, I guess, quality control and how Joseph Adai gets packaged on Tony Romo. But again, for a collector like myself, you definitely want something like this in your collection because it is rare, even though it's an error figure. It is kind of out of the ordinary. So absolutely a welcome addition to my collection.